Hey guys, welcome back. This is the lecture number 69 from our bootcamp series. In the last lecture, we discussed about action views in Rails in details. Now in this lecture, we will look at the routing in Rails. Okay. And we will try to understand that what is routing and why it is used. So routing is the most important part of a Rails application. The main purpose of a Rails router is to recognize the request URLs and dispatch them to a controller action. Okay, so let's see how this works. Here you can see that I am at the students index page. Okay, and I have opened the localhost 3000 and students in URL. Okay, now if I refresh the page, okay, so you can see at the terminal that request is coming as slash students and it is processed by the index section of the students controller okay so this is the task of rails router okay because it recognizes the request url and what is the request url that slash students okay and then it dispatched it to a controller action so how you can uh, identify that which controller it has dispatches this, this request so students controllers index section okay and you this request url can be of any type like get patch post delete and all the routes of these requests are defined into config routes.rb okay for example here you can see this is the type of a get request okay now let's try to delete an student when you click on the delete click okay on it now you can see that started get process started delete okay student slash one and processing by students controllers destroy as html okay so this time we got a delete request okay now if you create a new student let's say try to create a new student add some values here and add a date of birth let's see we have validation in date of birth so we need to provide age which is less than 15 years let's say provide 2005 february 25 2005 okay and now submit the form okay so when you submit the form you can see that it has executed a post request okay so it identifies the request type first okay and then the url and then it dispatches it to the create action of the students controller okay so this is the tau for type a task of our rails router and now let's open the routes file so you can see that where we define our routes however we already know that we define our routes in the config routes.rb okay so here you can see that how we have defined here all the routes we defined for the resources only okay and there is one root path so you can see resources projects resources courses and resources students and resources blog okay however you can define both resource and non-resource routes in your config routes.rb okay when you define a non-resource route you need to specify the type of the request and the controller name and the action name to the serve that request okay for example let's define some non-request route we have a controller welcome here already as we know okay so we have a welcome controller and it's a non-resource route because we do not have any table to perform CRUD operation in welcome controller or we don't have any model for welcome controller as well so for example let's say we want to add a non-resource route let's say about us in our welcome controller so how we can do this there are two ways to do this we can do it like welcome slash index okay this is also possible and now it will give you a path for let's say welcome no, not welcome but index because we already have index section that is defined as root so let's say about okay welcome slash about now when you access the route for this you will get uh, let's say welcome slash about path okay and there is another way to do define it as well let's say get you can do it like uh, 
about and now you just need to make controller name and action name as key welcome hash about here both get welcome about and get about welcome hash about are the get routes in welcome controller and both of these routes will point to the about action inside the welcome controller for example let's say if we have defined def about action here okay and now if we look at the routes open the routes routes grep about we you can see that we have two routes here welcome underscore about okay and one is direct about <coughs> and you can see the url pattern here as well this about welcome about or this format will be accessed as let's say localhost column 3000 slash slash about Now, if you try to access this it in your browser, you will get that no template exists because we really don't have a template for that. So, but that does not uh, that is not the point of concern because we just want to uh, see that how we can define non-resource routes here. So now let's post that in. Okay, so you can see that welcome control about is missing a template for request format text HTML. Okay, and now if you go look at the terminal, you can see that uh, this request is coming at the slash welcome slash about and processed by the welcome controllers about action. Okay, now if you visit this only, let's say remove the welcome from the URL and let's visit only slash about, make some space here and now hit the enter, you will get the same error okay and you will get the path now let's say uh, started get slash about processing by welcome controller about as html okay and completed 406 not acceptable okay so this is how you can define non-resource routes in your routes file similarly you can do follow the same format for defining your uh, let's say post routes patch routes and delete routes and the other type of routing that we can allow here is the resource routing. Resource routing allow you to quickly declare all of the common routes for a given resourceful controller. A single call to a resource can declare all of the necessary routes for an index, show, new, edit, create, update and destroy actions. Okay, for example, if you can, if you look at the st student's controller, then you can see that we have seven required actions which is required to perform CRUD operation in a Rails application over the student's project, uh, object or, or any active record object that is index, new, create, show, edit, update and destroy. Okay. And this can be defined using the resource routes here. Okay. Now let's open your terminal again. Just uh, shut down this web picker and now grab the routes for the students so when you will see you can see that uh, we have routes for students slash students slash students and slash new id edit id id and other routes so we get the uh, four types of uh, request for students controller that is get post patch and delete okay here pattern which are similar just to you uh, just can be used for updating the students now this is how you can define resource routes in your application okay and a resource routes will provide all the required routes to perform CRUD operation okay and this will create seven different routes in your application for resources like uh, for that resource like index new show edit create update and destroy now let's understand one more concept regarding routing okay and that uh, would 
be better if you can keep uh, this way in mind to define your custom routes and your resource routes okay now let's say we have an student here now we define a test route here let's say get students slash test okay and let's make uh, another mapping here or we can simply create a test method in inside the students controller so open the students controller and let's make a test method def test and this method now save it and go to the browser and write students test here you can see that could not find a student with id test however we define a separate route for it student slash test we defined a separate route but it is still it is redirecting it to the you can see show as html this is not redirecting you to test action inside the students controller okay but if you move this line above the students resource and now if you save this and re refresh the page you will see a different error that students controller test is missing a template for request format okay so you got the difference what happened if we define that get uh, custom gate route below the student resource and uh, what happened when we define the custom gate resource a uh, get route before the students resource okay the reason here is the rails routes are matched in the order they are specified so if you have a resource resources students let's say above a get resource test the show actions route for the resource line will be matched before the get line okay to fix this you need to define your get request or your request like with which is having some path like let's say student slash or your resource name slash some other action then you must define those paths before your resource routes okay else you will get such kind of conflict okay because when you do that then your custom routes will be identified first and then your resource will get identified okay now if you wish you can also define multiple resource route at once uh, for example here we have defined student projects courses students blocks okay now what we can do that we can define simply like this courses blocks and projects okay this is also a fine way to do that but this approach is preferable only when you need only resource routes not member or collection route for them or not do not need any name space or scope routing for a resource okay so it would be better if you can define them uh, individually okay but if you are clear that you never need any member or collection method for that that we gonna discuss in the next lecture for your routes then you can define multiple resource route in one line okay so for now we will definitely add member and collection route so i'm just uh, uh, defining it as one only and let's remove this test route as well and remove this action as well because that was just to show you how we should define our routing in an order okay so just to try to follow these routing practices that we see that what we cover already covered in this lecture that what are the resource and non resource routes how to define non resource routes and what are the ways to define resource routing in a rails project and what happen when we define custom non resource route above uh, our resource route and or below our resource route so we already saw the difference and we already saw that how router works and how it identifies the url and how it dispatches the request to the controller action okay so that's all from this video i know this is very brief about the routing but as we practice more in coming lectures and with this lectures approach that we will get more better about it 
okay so in the next lecture we will cover member and collection routing which is the most important routing types in rails and we frequently use them when we working on a uh, rails application which is uh, quite uh, lengthy or quite good uh, good enough in length okay so we need to work on uh, member and collection routes so many times okay so and we will discuss that in next coming lecture so thanks for watching this and let's meet into the next lecture till then tata goodbye take care Stay safe.